Welcome everyone to today's Asian Impact Webinar organized by ADB's Economics Research and the Regional Cooperation Department. Today's topic is an enhanced measure of regional cooperation and integration. Regional cooperation integration has been a core element to support ADB's mission in achieving inclusive and sustainable growth for the Asia Pacific region. So it has been very important to understand the dynamics of RCI and accurately capture its multiple dimensions with a complete and quantifiable measure. Today, we are very glad to introduce our new report, Asia Pacific Regional Cooperation Integration Index Enhanced Framework Analysis and Applications. We have a distinguished group of panelists with us today to discuss what it means to have a reliable standard, standardized measure for regional cooperation integration and how this RCI, regional cooperation integration, can help support the region in navigating the pandemic and steer the post-pandemic recovery to achieve more inclusive and sustainable growth. Since its creation in 2017, the Asia Pacific Regional Cooperation Integration Index, called ARCHI, has provided policymakers and practitioners with key indicators to understand the dynamics better and track the progress of regional cooperation integration in Asia Pacific region. This index has become a reference of regional cooperation integration for other institutions as well, providing a valuable tool to analyze regional integration as a development strategy. In 2019, we embarked on a new initiative to strengthen this framework and introduce some innovations to the Archie framework. Going beyond traditional measures of regional integration, we now incorporate the key areas of digital connectivity and environmental cooperation. It also embodies the adequate flexibility to allow other countries and regions to adopt context-specific information to guide their own regional integration strategies. This index will also offer a tool that allows researchers to be able to use this index to evaluate the impact of regional integration on growth inequality or environmental sustainability among others. So first, let me have the presentation on this uh, feature and findings of uh, uh, the report, Enhanced Archie Framework. The Rolando Evinado, uh, Evindano, who's an economist in ADB's research department, is going to make the presentation. Rolando has led the preparation of this report. After the presentation, a panel discussion will follow where we'll be able to discuss key areas for the regional cooperation integration for the region and how better indicators can help us work more closely with the government counterparts and partners. So let me now give the floor to Rolando for the presentation of main findings of the report. Over to you. Thank you very much, Xinjiang, and um, I would like to first to, to thank uh, the team that has been involved in the preparation of this report. This is a joint work uh, with several members of our uh, team, Mara Taya, Clarissa Arellano, Lovely Tomin. Uh, thank you for your effort and also to our panelists for accommodating this um, presentation of the report today. Um, so to provide some framework, um, as mentioned uh, uh, at the beginning of our uh, event, uh, the Asia-Pacific Regional Cooperation and Integration Index was introduced to better understand and offer standardized measures of regional cooperation and integration. Um, as this process continues and evolves, the ARCHI index needed to be adapted accordingly. In this report, we present in detail the innovations to its framework, the main results of the enhanced index, and the potential for subsequent applications in the future. An important motivation for Archie was also to support the three operational priorities in ATB's operational plan, high quality connectivity within economies, 
uh, global and regional trade and investment opportunities and increase and diversified regional public goods. Archie is also one of the 10 indicators of regional development progress in ADB's corporate results framework. While ADB uses internationally compatible indicators in other areas, no external framework, including the SDG framework, could capture fully the goals of this operational priority. So the refinements that we proposed uh, for the framework were aiming also to track tracking process on these priorities. And we will see some examples of how this was done. As the channels of regional cooperation and integration evolved, there was a growing demand among the stakeholders to review and strengthen the index. The improvements to the baseline index, what we call the baseline, included two main dimensions, measuring the contributions of technology and digital connectivity and environmental cooperation. On the left-hand side, we have the current and the enhanced structure of the index. The index coverage has also been expanded from 158 to 173 economies and from 26 to 41 indicators. The two dimensions will better um, permit a better understanding of the role of technology and connectivity and regional and environmental cooperation. Digital technologies are redefining the means of connectivity and progressively have more impact on how we measure regional integration. Trends in technological progress, knowledge exchange, intra-regional research collaboration, internet penetration, and for example, bandwidth traffic show that Asia is increasingly integrated through these channels. The environmental cooperation dimensions, on the, on the other hand, provides a basis for assessing performance in the context of regional cooperation by including information on trade in environmental goods, environmental agreements, ecological footprint, and environmental health scores. On the right-hand side, we can see also the new indicators that were included in the enhanced framework where less uh, available data was possible for the case of Asia Pacific economies. Uh, this was particularly the case in the case of uh, financial uh, money and finance, financial integration, regional value chains, and other uh, type of cultural constraint. So let me show two examples. Archie considers, for example, uh, that regional exchange co-movement are a measure of financial and monetary integration. The, ind the indicator compares regional and global correlations of exchange rates relative to the US dollar. In this indicator, before the calculation of the index, Europe and North America have the highest level of intra-regional exchange rate correlation, reflecting higher financial integration. Within sub sub uh, Asian subregions on the right-hand side, exchange rate correlation has gradually strengthened since 2006 up to 2018. Another example is uh, the indicator on intra-regional flight passenger capacity uh, based on bilateral city level data of uh, intra-regional flights. Regional flights in Europe and Asia comprise a large and steady share around more than 60% of international flights. This reflects the high connectivity and movement of people within these regions. So these are just two examples of the new indicators that were included in the existing dimensions. Now, on the new dimensions, uh, and before going to present the results of the index, we can see that the new indicators on the technology and digital con connectivity offer some insights on the trends in these dimensions. For example, international internet bandwidth has increased significantly be, uh, from 1.7 to 56 terabytes per second in less than 13 years from 2006 to 2018. Internet penetration has also increased over the last decades with one in every two Asians gaining internet access uh, in 2018 compared to one in five in 2010. Asian economies have also improved knowledge collaboration and research collaboration, as shown by the intra-regional research outputs rising from 38% in 2006 to 49% in 2018. On the environmental cooperation side also, we see that the intra-regional trade in environmental goods is relatively high with 56% of the share 
and also that Asia has performed less well in some of the environmental scores compared to other regions. Now let's look at the results of the index. The results of the enhanced index in general remain positive and they display a positive trend of regional integration in Asia and the Pacific. Overall, we observe a moderate 7% increase from 2006 to 2018 in the line that is represented here on the black uh, dot line. We also observe notable improvements uh, in trade and investment, for example, this dimension increased from 2017, uh, in partly due to intra-regional good imports and cross-border investments that were increasing over the past year. The progress on the technology and digital connectivity is also remarkable. So this is the purple line we see, with a 31% increase in this dimension between 2006 and 2018, reflecting the rapid growth in intra-regional internet bandwidth, traffic, and research collaboration. Across regional groupings, so when we compare Asia with other regions, we see that EU or the European Union remains the leader in terms of regional integration followed by Asia Pacific. Asia performance in trade and investment, regional value chains and people and social integration is similar to the European Union, while the performance in the new technology and digital connectivity is the highest among all regions. However, we see still some gaps, important gaps in the money and finance dimension, where Asia's estimate on the dimensional score is about half of the European Union. We also observe that we have included a new region in the index. This is the Middle East that you can see here in the spider web. So this is a new region that was not part of the baseline index. For Asian's regions, what we see is that there has been a gradual and uh, increase uh, for most of the subregions. Southeast Asia leads the trend, uh, lead, uh, driven by policy efforts on trade and investment and infrastructure and connectivity. And East Asia also performs highly with a remarkably high score on the digital connectivity new dimension. Southeast Asia and Central Asia have improved gradually their performance after they started from a relatively low base and they have uh, in recent years improved uh, thanks, for example, to uh, projects and new initiatives on improving port capacity and infrastructure and connectivity. Overall, we see that the subregional results remain wide ranging uh, with East and Southeast Asia outperforming other regions in most of the dimensions. The index identifies also the contributions of different dimensions to regional integration. For Asia, Regional value chains, infrastructure and connectivity, and people and social integration are the dimensions that continue being the main drivers. In contrast, money and finance integration remains the weakest dimension in Asia. It has the lowest weight and also the lowest contribution among all dimensions. When we compare our initial or baseline index with the new enhanced index, while some differences are to be expected, the main trends and difference are consistent between the two indexes. So this is what we see between these two spider webs, the six dimensional index on the left and the eight dimensional index. For two regional initiatives, uh, including ASEAN and GMS, they continue to stand out, particularly in the areas of trade and investment, and also in the new dimensions of digital connectivity and environmental cooperation. Building on these results, the RC could offer potential to gain a deeper understanding of the impact of economic integration on development outcomes. Consistently, the index shows that a country's level of regional integration tends to be associated with income and other proxies for economic development. Here, what we see is how high, economy, high income economies report higher RC estimates compared to other income groups while low and lower middle income economies report low and highly concentrated estimates. Apart from income, uh, the new enhanced framework allows us to use a spatial analysis. Uh, as we see here in the map, uh, we see that location tends to influence regional integration. As the figure presents, economies with the same level of regional integration tend to be one near one another. 
the spatial component of regional integration can be exploited, especially when analyzing its role in other development outcomes. So we have developed a module in the report to use this type of analysis. Finally, other innovations in the enhanced framework that can improve the applicability of Archie uh, have, we have a new feature, which is the flexibility to customize the index structure, which allows to adapt the Archie to a specific needs of subregions and including new indicators. Uh, this tailored approach can also improve the accuracy of underlying data, for example, allowing us to use national data sources and facilitate in-depth analysis. One example is presented here for the index customization for the Eurasian region where we have two innovations. One is expanding the subregion to the Russian Federation, which is not part of the ADB members, but it's an important partner for these countries in, in this subregion. And second, a customized structure with tailored indicators using national data sources um, to calculate the index. Other applications in customization have been done, for example, for the case of the uh, APEC region. To the extent that regional economic integration and global economic integration are interrelated, a new globalization index is being developed using the enhanced Archie as the blueprint. The index can provide a synopsis of a country's full economic integration profile, taking into consideration the regional and non-regional component. Such an assessment is important today when we seek to assess and understand better the role of regional integration in the pace of globalization. The research uh, agenda in that sense is ambitious and we uh, propose different channels in the report to use the Archie estimates as a research tool, for example, to understand uh, uh, some of the development outcomes. Our previous analysis had already shown, for example, that a country's level of integration is associated with income and we can expand these to another measures of inequality or, for example, income convergence, uh, and to explore how regional economies are experiencing or not convergence and how regional integration contributes to these efforts. So we will continue implementing this knowledge sharing and improving the relevant technical documentation, manual and data sets to continue this type of research. And finally, uh, as we are launching our report today, we have a new website that we have upgraded where we have all the new estimates and uh, the new interface will allow users to create customizable charts and download all the data, including links to the report and other references. So you can access it uh, through the QR code flash in this screen. I'll stop here. Thank you very much. and looking forward to the discussion. Thanks, Rolando. Well, let me now introduce our panelists today. Um, Ms. Jane Drake Brookman, who is an industry professor at Institute for International Trade with the University of uh, Adelaide. Um, Ms. Drake Brookman is widely published and uh, internationally recognized for her expertise on services trade and competitiveness for her, um, uh, for her work and uh, on services. Uh, she's also founder and the director of the Australian Services Roundtable and has served on the executive committee of the Hong Kong Coalition of Services Industries and co-convenes the Asia Pacific Services Coalition. Mr. Yan Dubaval is the chief of trade policy and facilitation in the Trade Investment Innovations Division of the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for the Asia and Pacific called ESCAP. Mr. Duval has conducted research and delivered technical assistance and advisory services on trade policy and facilitation throughout Asia and the Pacific, including the ones on the WTO trade facilitation agreements. Mr. Ronald Butyong is the Chief of Regional Cooperation and in Integration Thematic Group uh, in Sustainable Development and Climate Change Department of ADB. Mr. Butyong oversees and coordinates ADB's 
overall vision of cooperation and integration operations by providing relevant strategic and technical advice. He also has developed and maintained the thematic policy and strategies, operational plans and directional papers to guide Bankwai, the regional cooperation integration work, and also make sure that uh, these work are aligned with the ADB strategy 2030. Thank you all for joining us today. And um, I'm gonna have, uh, you know, just uh, one question for everyone to start with. If you have any feedback or comments on the Archie framework and the report findings. Uh, so can we maybe uh, start with uh, Ms. Drake Brookman? I'm happy, happy to start, thank you very much. Really, I can only congratulate the ADB on the considerable foresight behind this particular statistical effort. The fact is, as I see it, that there are forces at play in the region which are heading in the direction of some fragmentation rather than integration. And perhaps the biggest emerging challenges in terms of diverging regulatory approaches that will impact on trade and investment flows lie precisely in the green and the digital arenas. So I feel the ADB has got this absolutely right um, to focus on building into the index now those indicators around those two arenas. I was listening this week to Pascal Lamy and he, uh, he spoke at some length about governments increasingly regulating to protect their economies not only from competition, but also from risk and pointing out that um, it's sometimes hard to tell the two apart. And he absolutely sensed a danger of economic fragmentation as, as a result of uh, particularly um, divergence with respect to the digital economy and with respect to decarbonisation. So it's very important that we be able to measure our progress and have some benchmarks against which to judge the region's weaknesses and strengths in overcoming those risks. Um, and it's precisely because if we know how to measure and track them, then we'll find ways to handle this thrust to disintegration because there are always solutions and, and we'll come back, I'm sure, uh, to the solutions, but uh, one of the ones I see is, is we need a big push on regulatory dialogue and cooperation. That cooperation word is critical to the integration outcomes. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Duval, would you like to uh, share any views or thoughts? Uh, yes, uh, I mean, I mean on the report overall, I mean, I think uh, you, you deserve uh, great congratulations, right? It's very, uh, it's very informative. It has a lot of, uh, of new data. And I think adding, uh, adding those two dimensions is something that was very much needed. Uh, I mean, both the ICT, uh, digital and the environment. Uh, uh, so I think it's really going in the right direction and it's, it's very rich report. So congratulations. Thank you. Um, so Mr. Butyong, any comments? Feedback? Sure, sure, Sinian. Uh, but before I give any comments, I would like to uh, begin by expressing on behalf of our own RCI community, our great appreciation to you, Rolando, and all the colleagues involved in developing, introducing, and enhancing this uh, index, the Archie. The, the Archie framework, uh, I must say, has indeed supported and will continue to support our important work in ADB in promoting and uh, facilitating RCI or regional cooperation. What is unique in Archie is that it is a performance measurement and research tool designed with the unique needs and regional cooperation context of Asia and the Pacific in mind. It certainly exemplifies the high priority and importance that we give to regional cooperation 
and the knowledge needed to effectively support it. So once again, uh, congratulations, Sin Yang and team. Over to you. Thank you. Okay, well, well, I want to actually have a bit more discussion than a simple index, but uh, let me uh, ask uh, Jan. I know ESCAP has recently developed the uh, Digital and Sustainable Development Regional Integration Index uh, called uh, DG3, right? So this uh, uh, suggests the uh, importance of the digital connectivity and the sustainability aspects also in consideration of uh, regional cooperation strategies and policies for uh, ESCAP. In your view, can Archie Framework support this? Uh, what are the strengths and uh, weaknesses of Archie in doing so? Okay, uh, so thank you, uh, Sin Young. And uh, yes, we've been uh, uh, developing um, uh, an, an index on digital and sustainable regional integration uh, in collaboration with our other uh, UN uh, regional commissions around the world. Um, this work has uh, started about five years ago, and it's really the, the, uh, the commission that leads this is uh, the Economic Com Commission for Africa, uh, because the member states uh, actually ask uh, them to develop such index. And so uh, based on that, uh, they've, uh, they've extended the collaboration from Africa to Asia to, uh, to other parts of the world. So we are part of this. Um, when we started working with, uh, with them, uh, we realized that it would be very important to focus on digital and sustainable uh, aspect much more. And so that's what, uh, why we developed this digital and sustainable regional, regional integration index. So the first version of the index was released in uh, 2019. Uh, that covered the period 2013 to 2017. Um, and, uh, and now we're doing an update of, uh, of the index uh, as well as building an online interface, right? So by the end of the year, we hope to have data for uh, up to 2019 uh, covering this. So in terms of uh, how DG3 and Archie uh, address sustainability and, and digital elements, I think it's, it's uh, useful to, uh, to point out two differences uh, between the index that make them in a way uh, complementary. Uh, the first is that uh, in the DG3, uh, we, maintain, we mainstream sustainable indicators um, into each dimension. So we have seven dimensions. I think you have six or something like that, plus two now, or four plus we two. We have now eight. <laughs> yeah, so now eight, right? So we have seven. Uh, and then, uh, but then we mainstream sustainable indicators into each and every dimension. We don't create a, a sustainable uh, uh, dimension. So for example, uh, if I take trade as an example, uh, so conventional component will look at overall trade flows. Uh, but then the sustainable component will look at environmental goods trade flows, right? So, um, and then if you look at the digital economy dimension, so the sustainable dimension will look at access uh, of women to the internet, for example, right? So we're trying to really push the social and environmental aspect uh, as part of the sustainable development um, part of the index. Uh, so for us, it has been quite important to have this sustainability angle uh, really mainstream through every aspect of the index because we feel that's, that kind of reflects the spirits of the, of the SDGs uh, quite, quite well. Uh, still, I, I, uh, I believe, right, that a dedicated environmental uh, dimension like you have is the Archie, I think is still very useful because uh, it can be easier to understand uh, and to focus on uh, for officials dedicated to environmental issues, right? Because countries still, governments still work in silos a bit, right? So I think it's quite useful to have also uh, that, that format. Uh, we will be launching, in fact, uh, a new report uh, next Monday uh, at the WTO on climate smart uh, trade and investment. And so that report uh, that is done with Antad and UNEP uh, features uh, a new index. So it's not a regional integration index, but uh, it is a, an index on climate smart uh, trade and investment. And so it's really looking not only, doesn't uh, look only at environment, it looks actually even narrower, uh, focus on, on climate change readiness. Uh, of trade and investment policy. So that could also be of interest uh, for you when you uh, further develop um, Archie environmental uh, dimension. The second uh, difference, I think, between DG3 and Archie that is, uh, is interesting to, to pick up on is the digital dimension. Uh, our digital dimension indicators have a very strong focus on the regulatory aspects. So digital regulatory environment, as opposed to more infrastructure or, or access to ICT. 
Um, and uh, so we are calculating a, a regulatory similarity index. Uh, and so we've been further developing uh, that, uh, that index over the past two years in collaboration with the OECD. Um, uh, we are maintaining, as you know, right, the Digital Services Trade Restrictiveness Index. So uh, our regional digital trade integration index is broader in scope than the OECD DSTRI. Uh, and so we will make uh, that data available for 22 countries uh, before the end of the year. Also, at the same time, we release the, the DG3 index. So this is something that may be of interest, but it takes really a lot of time to collect uh, regulatory data because also it keeps changing. So let me stop here. Thank you. Um, Jane, uh, regulatory cooperation and harmonization is a very important area for uh, you know, regional integration in the context of uh, rising digital economy, uh, as you also uh, rightfully mentioned. So uh, in your view, what will be the priority areas for digital regulatory cooperation in Asia Pacific and data flows and then governance issues are particularly challenging now in uh, this area. How can we capture these aspects uh, for digital connectivity? Thank you. Well, um, before I, I mean, you've asked me a, a very important question there about uh, digital regulatory heterogeneity, but I do really want to just quickly uh, support what Jan has said with um, this regulatory similarity index, because ultimately what we are going to be trying to measure is is um, the shift towards similarity and towards convergence. Um, I tend to use the convergence word, uh, but I think it's it's a very constructive way to, to think about it. And that, that work that UNSCAP is doing with the OECD is, is very important. My own field of inquiry, as you know, is trade and services and increasingly online cross-border trade and services. Um, more commonly described these days as digital trade. I'd just like to, to make one quick um, additional point before I come to your question. And that is that I have to note that the index doesn't yet cover exports or imports of services where domestic regulation actually plays at least as big a role in constraining trade as traditional market access or national treatment restrictions do. But inclusion of this first round of digital indicators is a huge step forward and I'm, I'm confident that that will enable in, in future the iterative process of, of building in uh, additional indicators that capture the services elements. For example, it's fantastic to have included some intellectual property indicators and cultural product and ICT product indicators but ultimately I'd like to see cultural services and ICT services, and by the way, environmental services, as well as environmental goods, because for me, the two go so closely hand in hand together. And I, I know uh, all of that is very dependent on the availability of statistical information. So when it, when it comes to the regulators, I think, um, and there's a lot of catch up that the regulators have to play. Um, uh, I was um, listening uh, to, to the head of the IMF speak this week and she, she said, we used to say that the future is digital, but the pandemic has shown us that the future has arrived and digital connectivity has just become absolutely essential. We couldn't be having this, this conversation without the platforms we're on. It's essential for supply chain management, essential to online education opportunities, essential uh, to e-health and to e-payments, to e-commerce. It's, uh, you know, the list goes on. And what this means is that everywhere, addressing the constraints to the diffusion of digital technologies is going to really ratchet to very high priority. And some of those constraints can only be addressed by greater regulatory cooperation. So the agenda on regulatory cooperation is, is not going to go away. It's going uh, to intensify uh, because the reality is, as I hinted at earlier, that the regional and the global digital economy has actually been fragmenting rather than integrating. And you know, I don't have time to go into detail and we all await the UNSCAP's release of this new data with the OECD, but we do know 
that the number of measures, the number of digital services trade measures, many of them, about a quarter of them relate to cross-border data flows uh, are going up in the region. So constraints on data processing, use and storage on online payments, downloading and streaming at the general level of restrictiveness has been increasing. Now, obviously, um, how do you capture how do you how you capture that convergence and divergence is, is immensely difficult and as Jan said it's a painstaking process. So I, I think the key place to start here is the OECD Digital Services Trade Restrictiveness Index, which was released in 2014. And there's been a huge amount of recent work to extend that data set both in APEC and in the UN SCAP region. Um, it's, in my view, a, a priority to um, increase the number of countries that covers, but that is a key indicator that ultimately has to go uh, into the index if we're going to be measuring this. We also have the eSight Index on Barriers to Digital Services Trade, and this year we've seen two new developments. Uh, one is headed by Simon Evanet at the Digital Trade Alert, which is an offshoot from the Global Trade Alert at St. Garland University, which tracks government policies. And the other one is, is being run by Bernard Hochman and Martina Farrakhane at the European University Institute. In, in fact, the Institute for International Trade is also contributing to that work. But building new indicators is a painstaking process. The kinds of tools we're talking about are extremely useful. And um, I just note that the business community in APEC is also calling for these indicators as essential business tools of interoperability and connectivity in, in the APEC region, for example. So uh, look, I think I would just leave it there uh, for now. Um, we can we can come back to regulatory cooperation if, if you'd like to later. Okay. Well, uh, thanks a lot. Um, yeah, we all appreciate the uh, uh, you know challenges of uh, creating uh, new indicators when the situation keeps evolving <laughs> to make it uh, you know, much more again challenging to think like uh, what will be the better uh, sort of indicators to include. So um, uh, Ronnie, um, can you also share your insights on how we can use the enhanced Archive framework to support ADB's work on uh, uh, you know, RCI, regional cooperation integration? Um, can uh, new indicators, new dimensions support ADB's RCI programs in the areas of uh, digital connectivity and then sustainable development? How? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sin Yang. Yeah, uh, Archie uh, and this new framework has uh, been serving and continues to serve a variety of important functions to support our regional cooperation work. Allow me to cite a few examples. Uh, first, Archie uh, is a multi dimensional objective measure of overall performance of regional integration in our region. And as uh, Rolando mentioned, Archie is reported at level one of our very own annual corporate results framework. It is a broad-based performance indicator covering uh, the key socioeconomic dimensions that are fundamental to regional integration. Second, uh, this index allows us to understand more about the contribution of regional cooperation to socioeconomic development. Uh, the structure and content, especially of this new enhanced Archie and the results that it can generate will certainly enable us to expand and deepen our knowledge of the many drivers of regional integration across Asia and the Pacific. It allows us to compare RCI performance within the region, as well as with other regions of the world, which is particularly useful, especially now when Asian economies are forming their own mega regional trade agreements, such as RCEP. And at the same time, 
participating in large inter-regional agreements such as CPTPP. And the third is that the results and associated research from Archie have a strong potential to support evidence-based planning of our RCI operations, including those of the country and other development partners. The nature and increasing diversity of this index, its new dimensions and indicators, as well as efforts to improve the availability of data allows policymakers and us development partners to come up with a more complementary or synergistic package of RCI operations. The Enhanced Archie can also help us identify operational choices based on broader criteria and more customized analyses. So Xinyang, uh, we definitely welcome the introduction of digital connectivity in this uh, enhanced index. And um, as mentioned by fellow panelists, digital technology will continue to drive higher productivity and increase intra and inter-regional trade. Um, it has already shown great potential to promote inclusion as it allows SMEs unprecedented opportunities to access export markets. Our three major programs, Central Asia Regional Economic Cooperation, CAREC, the Greater Mekong Subregional Economic Cooperation Program, GMS, and the South Asia Subregional Economic Cooperation Program have all included ICT and digital technology in their respective regional cooperation agenda. With the inclusion of digital connectivity, the enhanced Archie will now be able to measure the capacity to generate and apply digital technology to expand and diversify merchandise trade flows as well as people flows. The uh, broader coverage of sustainable development in this new index is certainly most welcome. As uh, was noted in the Asian Economic Integration Report of 2018, uh, it uh, set out a rationale for investment in regional public goods and uh, expanded regional public goods as uh, presented by Rolando embodies the third pillar of our very own RCI operational plan 2019 to 2030. The indicators under this new environment dimension in our chi relate closely to this third pillar in relation to, among other things, climate-friendly cross-border infrastructure, carbon market and emissions trading schemes, transboundary water and natural resource management, promoting the blue economy and cross-border mechanisms to enhance cooperation among countries on regional public goods. Let me stop here, Xinyang, and uh, over to you. Thanks, Rani. Well, um, there are a lot of questions also from the floor. So let me uh, turn to Rolando for maybe giving a bit better explanation uh, for the uh, inclusion or exclusion of a certain uh, aspects uh, from the uh, uh, regional cooperation integration index. Well, let me uh, combine some questions and then summarize for you. Um, in uh, Archie, uh, is there any uh, you know, thoughts or uh, plan to incorporate the, uh, uh, um, there was uh, questions on uh, the technology digital connectivity. Uh, can we uh, consider looking at the taxation on cross-border um, you know, transactions in digital economy, and also the women's access to technology and digital technology, uh, and is a, is this a possibility? Uh, what is the pro progress? And uh, uh, another one uh, on uh, the health cooperation and uh, education cooperation aspects in uh, Archie. Uh, can uh, these uh, regional health and then education cooperation can be factored in? 
Thanks a lot, Sion. So, well, thank you very much for, for these very interesting questions. And, and we unfortunately will not have all the time to, to go in detail, but uh, just to provide some answers. Um, perhaps uh, the, the, the question that I see um, in the top is related also to the how um, um, the, the tourism sector, how can regional effectively facilitate the regional recovery. So just to mention, we, we have a two year lag on the, on the index because uh, it's very data intensive. So we don't have still the effects that uh, are also in the second question about COVID-19. We do have information in some in the, of the dimensions for 2020. So we have three dimensions. We have collected data. And we observe very clearly uh, how these effects uh, on, 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 the, on the index are very clear for 2019 and 2020, um, but we still cannot measure the, 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 the extent of the, of the impact. Uh, this will probably be the case next year when we have all the uh, information for all the indicators in the enhanced framework. Um, on the question on, um, I think there was a question on, on uh, knowledge collaboration and education. Um, that's one area where we think uh, the index has been a bit overlooked, but the digital connectivity and technology, actually the dimension is called technology and digital connectivity. And we do make I an mean, effort to focus on some indicators that are currently not captured. For example, intra-regional patents production, intra-regional research outputs. So research outputs in terms of um, journal art articles, uh, research publications, etc., And this is an indicator that we believe has a lot of uh, promise because it reflects a lot of what's happening also within some of the sectors that have been mentioned um, in digital services sectors, sectors who have an intensive, uh, digitally intensive um, sectors like uh, data processing, uh, cloud computing, etc. So we, we, that's why this indicator we believe can provide maybe in the future a good um, proxy for what is happening in terms of research and knowledge collaboration. We don't have an index. We used to have an index of intra-regional mobility of students. And um, we are considering if, if we to include it. In the end, we didn't include it uh, because we had some data gaps for a lot of countries, but we do have information within ADB of, for example, intra-regional student mobility, which is an interesting um, also index for knowledge uh, collaboration. Um, in terms of progress on women's access to technology, um, we don't have that level of detail. So this is something where, for example, the index uh, developed by ESCA provides some angle that we do not have. So we provide perhaps more coverage, but less uh, sometimes disaggregation, for example, in terms of um, uh, by gender or disaggregation between uh, rural and urban, etc. That's something that we hope to develop in the future, but at the moment, the indicators are aggregate. Um, Mm -hmm. I'll Thank stop you. For okay. Thank you, Rolanda. Well, uh, as Rolanda actually mentioned, you know, the uh, Archie doesn't really cover the uh, COVID era, but uh, most of the questions really from the floor focus on the COVID impact on regional cooperation. Uh, I would like to actually uh, seek your views and comments on how you feel that the COVID uh, has impacted the regional cooperation trend in the region, uh, both uh, either, either positively or negatively, like uh, how does uh, it, uh, you know, um, it's gonna uh, probably influence uh, uh, the future path of regional cooperation integration uh, in uh, Asia Pacific region. Uh, so perhaps uh, I go back to um, uh, Jane, uh, would you like to share any thoughts like how the COVID has affected the regional cooperation integration efforts in the region? Well, I think there is no, no question uh, that it has. Um, and I mean, I really do think that we all are so much more aware of our digital connection all the time. And I don't believe there's any going back from it because uh, tra trade in, um, in the region, particularly trade in services has not yet recovered. And the traditional delivery mechanisms are going to continue to be a lot more expensive than the digital connection mechanisms. 
um, with completely dependent on it for household food on a daily basis via e-commerce, for example. So I, I think well, what that means um, going forward is we, we used to think of um, uh, pe particularly of people mobility and of commercial establishment investment in, in, in many of those big um, infrastructural services sectors. This shift to digital is, is a big change. I think it's going to generate uh, more employment opportunities in, in the developing world. Uh, and we, we're going to have to focus much more on the whole business process outsourcing sector, which will increasingly go higher up the value chain as we become more and more dependent on, uh, on those value added um, options. In fact, I was listening to uh, someone today from the Malaysian professional services uh, providers and, and he said that what used to be a little add-on business for him in the construction sector was now his main game post-COVID. There's no going back uh, for many uh, companies that have transitioned uh, totally online and, and are delivering online, not just buying and selling and paying and ordering, but delivering online. So I think it's here to stay and it's going to require a, a big change. I was thinking uh, that, you know, in the context of COVID, it's, it's also um, worth thinking about um, the, the fact that uh, air linkages, um, air transport linkages have become um, not just about people movement, um, but, uh, airports and airlines have become absolutely fundamental to the delivery and distribution of the vaccine. Uh, and where, where those linkages, where those air linkages don't exist, um, then we have populations that remain more susceptible than other areas and tourism will remain on hold for precisely those economies that are very dependent um, on the tourist market. So uh, I, think, um, I think we've learned a lot of lessons uh, about what, what infrastructure is going to matter more. Uh, logistics have ratcheted to top priority. So has shipping. So have the crews on ships, <laughs> so have the airlines. Okay. Uh, so I, I don't see uh, any going back here. Thank you. Uh, well, um, let me go ask uh, also uh, Jan, uh, if there's any, uh, you know, the new sort of ASCA program that uh, will help uh, um, promote the uh, RCI and institutionalizing the RCI progress um, in, uh, in using this type of uh, index and how you see that, uh, you know, COVID really um, affected uh, this uh, RCI patterns. Yes, so I mean, I think James was very comprehensive in a, in a reply. Uh, but generally speaking, if you look at the regional integration and COVID-19, I, I would say that the uh, COVID-19 has made it very clear that regional cooperation is very much essential. Regional integration is very much essential. And not only regional, actually multilateral, uh, all kinds of, of cooperation. This is very obvious in terms of access to vaccine, even the development of the vaccine, right? Uh, it, it cannot, could not, never happen without multilateral cooperation. Um, so, uh, one on the downside, I mean, COVID-19, uh, I mean, closing borders, right, and the absence of tourism. I think I always believe that tourism is a is a great way uh, for to to uh, enable people from different countries to to understand each other better. And so, but now everybody is kind of stuck in their own country there. Uh, so this could actually affect a little bit, uh, you know, the, the, the type of regional integration or collaboration that we, we see in the future if that lasts uh, much longer. And I think maybe one more thing I could say is on the services side, right? I, I, I fully agree with, uh, with Jane on this, that services is going to become even more important. Uh, what was uh, before physical goods is going to become digital goods. Uh, and so digital services uh, is going to be very important. So, so trade facilitation of goods was very important during the crisis. But I think trade facilitation of services is really where we need to look at uh, look, uh, next. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, final question goes to uh, Rani. Well, 
this COVID uh, certainly has affected the uh, patterns and trends and then the RCI and then really the importance of uh, you know, uh, leveraging RCI for post-COVID uh, recovery is going to be quite essential. Um, you know, many also raised the questions about the you know, very low score on uh, the environmental footprint uh, of, uh, in uh, regional co uh, cooperation in the Asia Pacific region and the importance of uh, this energy and an environmental operations for ADB's uh, you know, work and support for the uh, post COVID recovery. So uh, based on these, uh, do you, if you have any uh, you know, views and uh, suggestions for incorporating the, uh, the environmental sustainability in ADB's uh, RCI operations? Sure. Uh, thank you, Xinyang, for that question. I think it's extremely relevant. And uh, perhaps I should uh, respond to that in, in the context of uh, how uh, the, our sub-regional programs uh, have been mobilized, not only uh, in terms of um, uh, <clears throat> addressing the COVID-19 pandemic, but also to move beyond it and uh, use it for post-COVID-19 recovery. And here, uh, Sin Yang, uh, it's very clear uh, what our, uh, my fellow panelists have mentioned is that the, the challenges of this pandemic has, uh, have reaffirmed that uh, the response, uh, prevention, and treatment of COVID-19 hinges on strong commitment and collaboration among countries with support of development partners such as ADB. Our uh, decades long practice and experience in RCI uh, has enabled us to uh, help the countries pool their collective actions spontaneously and within a relatively short span of time. Uh, institutional mechanisms and cooperation frameworks, such as those that we support, CAREC, GMS, and SASEC, as well as established mechanisms such as SARC and BIMSTEC, have facilitated the discourse and decision making, as well as the design and implementation of policies and initiatives. Um, going forward, I think there are three uh, interrelated near term priorities for. Uh, ADB and other development partners to support RCI and to enable the transition to post COVID-19 recovery. First is to overcome the new virus outbreaks. Uh, second is to achieve region-wide vaccination, uh, continued support for cross-border pandemic preparedness and uh, response and reopen borders safely. I think, but uh, going forward, we have to uh, consider the fact that the, the, that, uh, the type of RCI that we should promote has to be expansive. And this is what uh, clearly our management has called for, which is a wider, deeper, and a more open regional cooperation across the region which will not only foster growth, but as you rightly pointed out, should address environmental concerns. And um, yeah, we are currently preparing a framework for this and uh, for this wider, deeper and more open RCI as the basis of our future support. And this could involve uh, expanding our operations into existing and emerging areas, such as uh, regional financial market development, green and blue bonds, implementing uh, multilateral regional trade investment agreements, cross-border trade in renewable energy. A lot of our programs are now moving into renewable energy operation. Um, this is now the, the focus of uh, SASEC and uh, GMS, for example. Uh, wider agreements on common technology, industrial and natural resources management standards, and the like. Okay. And uh, so, we, we have to uh, build on this and uh, let's work on it together. Thank you. Thank you, Ronnie. 
Uh, thank you everyone for actively participating in uh, today's webinar. And uh, I see a very uh, exciting and then, uh, you know, uh, keen interest for our report on the Archie Index as well. So thank you all tuning in today's discussion. And uh, we are going to see everyone uh, for the next Asia Impact webinar on tackling poverty and inequality during COVID-19. Uh, this is going to be uh, on uh, 15 October 2021, 10.30 a.m. through Zoom. So please join us for the next event as well. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you.